Hey guys, I'm Gabrielle Castagna here with The Gamer at PAX West. We are at The Mix. Let's go play some indie games. Is this like time travel vehicle or? That's also one of the scientists. I love that. <laughs> and that's the other scientist. <laughs> oh, oh boy, okay. Was not expecting him at all. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm Kai. I'm one of the developers here at Wrong Organ. Uh, Mouthwashing is a narrative horror game in the PSX aesthetic. It takes place on a downed spaceship uh, after the captain has unfortunately decided to crash it in an attempt to kill himself and the crew. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, everyone has survived. The captain has become horribly disfigured and the crew finds out that the only supplies they have instead of their initial stuff is mouthwash. Uh, my name is Austin. I am a brand manager uh, overseeing the marketing campaign for The Nightling. Uh, I'm from Sabre, but I'm helping out a plucky team in the <laughs> Netherlands uh, who are the passion developers behind the project. Awesome. Uh, can you tell me like the company name, like who they are? Yeah, so their name is Twirlbound. They're based in Breda uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, this is their second game. Their first game was called Pine, a nice. uh, sort of open world uh, survival-esque sort of game. Uh, and this kind of follows some of those trappings, but obviously lots of learnings and growth from the team. I, can you speak a little bit to like the inspiration behind the game? Like, what was the like? There's so much color. I got a very Zelda vibe from it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So you know, some game inspirations could be a little bit of Zelda, more to the sort of uh, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword era. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but also like Okami is a great reference yeah. as well. Uh, they really love the sort of like, beauty of the art mixed with the sort of high fluidity and, and, and action. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when they set out to make this game, right, they're already like an a open world sort of based developer. Uh, when they were saying this next one, they said, hey, we're going to do an open world again. First and foremost, let's make sure it's really fun to traverse it. It is. <laughs> and, and that's really what they set off to do. So uh, that's where you're seeing shield sliding, you're seeing bouncing mushrooms, you're seeing uh, wind streams that you can catch air with and glide. Um, so that's kind of the key inspiration. And the other one was like, hey, if we do a medieval setting, we make you a knight, um, what if we drop the sword and you're just a shield? <laughs> And so there we born the Swiss army shield of weapons. <laughs> um, and so this shield's gonna help you traverse, but also have a variety of combat abilities and things like that. No, it's cute. I, like you touched on it a little bit. The Nightling is a child. I can you like tell us like how that came about? Like he's a little kid. Like in the demo, everybody's like, "Well, all right, calm down. Let's wait for the big night." Like, how? What? What was that like? Yeah. So you know, as a Nightling, it's kind of a squire in the world or knight in training. Um, you are, are, are squiring or assisting under the greatest knight in the land, Sir Lionstone. Um, and Sir Lionstone goes off on a mission um, and leaves you with just his giant shield. And so normally you'd be like, hey, we can wait for the, for the Lionstone to return. But it's been a little while. You, as like the trusted assistant to this knight, know something's up. You right. normally be back by now. And it's just sort of this sort of final, it's the catalyst to turn you from a knightling into the actual hero that you're meant to be. Um, and so we really kind of like this idea of like, breaking through the sort of roles that society puts on us and, and, and kind of fighting through that. And so that's it, like everyone's gonna tell you, no, 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 you're not ready for this, you're not good enough for this, for you're him. just a nightling, wait for the actual hero. And you're kind of saying, you know what, I no. think I can do this. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely got that vibe. It was really fun to just run around, explore the world. Yeah. I, is there anything that you want to make sure our viewers know about the game? I mean, I think you already did a great job, uh, and, and there's, there's lots going on, so uh, it's up to wishlisting right now with a small team like this, which is, uh, means a lot to them. Definitely. Um, but outside of that, it's an open world action adventure. Uh, you saw one region, the outskirts, uh, but there'll be a total of about four regions oh, wow. to explore over time, so nice. it should be a fun, fun experience for all. Awesome. Well, keep your eyes on the night leg. I liked it. It was really fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, 
I'm Lautaro. I am the lead game designer for RollerClick, and we are here at the mix with the Karate Kid Street Rumble game that we have worked on for quite a while. It's a retro beat em up uh, with a really good uh, classic pixel art and it can support up to four uh, players simultaneously and it features a mixture of levels and minigames to retell the story of the first Karate Kid trilogy uh, that will be the, well, the first one that everyone knows against Johnny, the trip to Okinawa and the third one, which is the first one with Tori Silver. It has been, it has been quite a journey. We try to do our own spin on the beat em up genre that has come with like a really big resurgence lately. The, you can see some of our inspirations such as Red Revenge for, for the art style, which we took a lot from them, they are, they are, they are right. Here at Diego from BAM10 Games, we're talking about Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. How are you, Diego? Good, really. How are you? I'm good. You must be a big Looney Tunes fan, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've been, I've been since childhood, but working, working in this game, it's, it's been amazing. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. When I saw this game announced, I started thinking about when growing up in all the different Looney Tunes games I played, and for some reason, there was a lot of Looney Tunes games. I'm curious if you've heard of some of these because these are probably deep cuts. Can I run a couple by you? I actually remember the Super NES games. Yeah, uh, I, I was a big fan of them. Uh, yes. uh, and they were they were also sports games. So that's true. Yeah. yeah. Some of my favorites was uh, Taz on the Genesis. I had a Game Boy game called Looney Tunes Collector Alert. Have you ever heard of that? No, no, no. Yeah, there's some weird ones. Uh, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time on the PlayStation. I, I played that one. Played that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I something about this gives me that kind of nostalgia, you know, and it feels like a throwback Looney Tune rather than maybe one of the more modern iterations. Yes, well, actually we went for the Chad Jones style uh, of, of, of uh, animation and, and art, so it, it is actually a bit of a throw, throwback. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about how this even came to be? Well, um, we were approached by, by, by Gamel and, and as soon as we got the brand we, we were like, yes, we, we want to do this. and. Uh, it, it was a it, it was a process of getting to know the four sports because, uh, for example, golf is not a big uh, sport in, in, in Peru where, where okay. the studio is based. But still, uh, we we just was went for it and 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 we made it happen. So, how did you choose what the sports were going to be? Um, it was basically based on uh, how how much popular are the sports okay. now and how how good they translate to video games as well. Basketball has has been translated uh, pretty well. Soccer and, and tennis and, and of course golf. So that, that cool. what goes into bringing the personalities of each of the characters into the game? Yeah, it, it went. Uh, most of it went to the animation. Uh, it, we we were just uh, going for the for the wackiness and, and fortunately they all have pretty distinct personalities. So we got to play a lot on a lot of, a lot on them, and that's how we did it. Very cool. When does it come out? It comes out on September 27th. Okay, and this is local co-op only, right? Yes. Was that a, a specific decision for some reason? Uh, we just wanted to focus on a, on a more intimate experience. Okay. Yes. Very cool. Thanks, Diego. Thank you so much.